All right, so one of the challenges that we are constantly faced with as we develop our applications is how to manage all this stinking CSS because CSS is like one giant pile of global variables. And so um, React has a has a couple of different ways for dealing with styling, especially for individual components. In our current application in React Kindling, we've relied on the traditional way of dealing with styling. So we've created this styles.js file, which is kind of a cheat that basically pulls in a less and a SA, uh, SCSS file. So we can bring together the styling from different libraries, because we've had this problem a number of times in the past where one set of libraries does uses less and then somebody else uses SAS. Um, this will let us bring everything together into one. Uh, and then at the end of the day, when this is all built, you'll end up with one um, CSS file. Looks like my build might be broken right now. There it is. So you'll end up with one styles file. You can, you'll also end up with this styles.js, which we don't use, but you'll end up with this styles.css that has everything in it. Uh, so this is one way of handling it. Um, and just real quick in the web pack config, this is where all the magic actually happens. You can see we do the SCSS loaders, we do the last loaders, uh, which are basically pulling in the CSS loader. And then all of these also use the style loader. Then down here in the code, in the plugins, section we have this extract text plugin that pulls out a final CSS file. Um, and then you can see here in the loaders we can deal with SCSS, CSS or less. And this works pretty well, but we're still using the old style of development. Um, and originally we actually had some code in this file and then we had some code in this file. So we're like bringing together the worst of every world uh, and scattering our styling just all over the place. Right now this file is not very big, it's you know under a hundred lines of code. So now is the time to fix any of the kind of sins of the past. So what I'm looking at doing is following a couple of these new um, philosophies. So there's a presentation about using CSS inside of React. Um, the slides are out here. Uh, there was just a couple of interesting things where they list out the plant, the problems, like everything's in the global namespace. Uh, you've got dependency issues. You've got dead code problems. So uh, probably every project we've ever worked on, there's some dead CSS in there, styles that don't apply to anything. And if you use the cascading portion of cascading style sheets, like um, Here's this MUI canvas, MUI app bar. Maybe, maybe we actually don't care about this anymore. Maybe we've removed that component. But it's hard to know whether or not we actually have because the styling cascades from here to here. Um, so most modern CSS development uh, best practices will tell you to not do this anymore, not nest your styles deep. And instead, um, just use something that is that can be one level deep and that is reasonably named. So, for a register component, I might have register, um, you know, name, and then I might have register oops, register dash input field or something like that. And then I'll I'll create the styling for each of those. All right, so. Um, with shared constants, less and SAS have helped alleviate a little bit of that. But you know, you still have the problem of we're developers, we're used to full-blown development languages where I have flow control, I can declare variables, I can deal with scoping, and CSS just doesn't really give us all of that, all of that nice things like that. So um, I'm gonna stop here on this particular slide, I'll share it in the, the video notes, but he walks through creating a button and kind of walks through in this presentation all of the, the reasoning behind moving your styling from an external style sheet closer to where the actual components live. 
Now there are two projects currently that actually handle this. One of them is called Radium. So you can use uh, Radium with your React components. And if you do, then your styling, let's scroll down and look at some actual code. Um, your styling actually lives right next to your components. So you can see right here in the render method, they've declared these styles. And then when they render, they've got this build style method with those styles method, or with the styles object. And it will generate all of the different styling. So this looks a little bit funny at first if you're used to writing CSS, um, you know, the way we've written CSS for the past 20 years. But we have the advantage now that we're moving to a language that everyone understands, hopefully. I mean, if we're writing React components, then we understand JavaScript. So we no longer have to learn, well, it's still useful to know CSS, but we don't have to learn other abstractions like less and SAS. You can just say, you can get the benefits that those languages provide, things like variable declaration and reuse of code, but you get that inside of JavaScript. So you reduce the number of abstractions, number of domain-specific languages, I guess, that you have to learn. Um, so that's the, the Radium project. There's also React Style. Uh, this one looks really cool because you can create styles, looks like a number of different ways. One is using the ES6, um, new, the new strings, the temp uh, template literals from ES6 or you can use JavaScript objects that we are all accustomed to. Uh, then down here, it talks about, well, maybe it's up here, somewhere in here. Uh, the React style integrates with Webpack, so they will extract all of the styling out of your React components and then generate a CSS style sheet. Um, so you still get the benefits of having a style sheet that's separate from your code, things like caching and web browsers are optimized to handle this, so that's cool. But you get to write your styles right next to where they're actually used. So my proposal is that we modify our components and start and bring our code, um, the styling for our code into the actual components. We'll still use the typical, uh, the current way that we do this with styles.less and styles.scss. Uh, we'll still do this to bring in other libraries because we're not going to go rewrite everybody else's libraries. But we can have the benefit of, of both worlds. As long as other people are just using these library, or the, <clears throat> as long as other people provide their CSS as libraries, we can import them. That'll still work just like normal. But we can then move our styling directly into the render methods of our individual components. And that way we're not doing stuff like this. And then you come here and you look and you're like, oh, what is register paper? And does it actually have a style? And oh, right there, looks like it has a width and a margin and all this other stuff. Um, so what do you guys think about that? I think that sounds awesome. Um, I have a question though. Okay. What about like global stylings like what if you want like all the h1s throughout your entire site to have a specific font size or something like that that's um, great are we going to have somewhere to put global stylings yes that's a great question and i think for things that you want to be global you would still stick them in in this main styles.less file so like this body right here that's probably going to be global this anchor right. tag right here that's probably going to be global so these things will probably stay um, but this other stuff where you can see we've begun to kind of leak the styling from our individual components into this global styles file, this kind of crap. I want to right. move it back right next to the component. And I think that that, that will make sense. But, you know, you still are going to have your global styling. Like if you're using Material UI or if you're using Twitter Bootstrap or Heroku has a new one called Purple. Uh, if you're using one of those libraries, then yeah, they define kind of the overall styling. How big are your H1s? And what color are they? And how do your link tags look? Um, all of that stuff is going to remain global. And 
and then in the individual components, you'll just get that by default. But then if you want something different, um, for example, this uh, register component, this mm -hmm. register paper, the width needs to be 400. For whatever reason, we decided to make it 400. That will live right next to this guy because the paper um, object doesn't come with any styling that defines its width. So I think you get a width of 100% by default. Um, anyway, I think we'll try it and see how it goes. We'll experiment and see if this makes our life easier or harder. But hopefully what happens is, is it prevents these style sheets from being, you know, three and four thousand lines long, which becomes really complicated. Of course, there is another approach, which um, I listened to a presentation by Pete Hunt when he was still at Instagram. And um, with Webpack, what's cool is you can require CSS right here. So I could say, you know, require um, my register dot scss for example and if you wanted to go this is what they did and this is an interesting approach they would then stick the register css less or s or whatever file they're using whatever styling they want to use they would put it right next to the component um, so that's an option actually you could still write using sass or less and just put it right next to the components um, it still lives in a separate file, though, so it's still reminiscent of having separate HTML template files from your code, which is kind of why I, I was thinking that <clears throat> one of these two projects would be interesting, because then your styles are defined right next to where they're used, and at least with this React style, you get the benefit of extracting all of your CSS at build time. I'm not sure if Radium does that or not, but we can... We can look into that. All right. Any other questions? Don't think so. Okay. I will post the video. I'll post these links. And then maybe on Friday when we get together and hack on this, we can actually put it into play and everyone can get a feel for, for this style of development. All right. Thanks, you guys. We will talk to you later. Yep, see ya.